Well, good morning, everybody. This is Cruise Man here in Sweetwater, Texas. Doing a little bit different mode of vlog. I'm on my way back to Dallas, Fort Worth. Been out visiting my brother in Midland. As many of you may know, if you watched my last mode of vlog. And I am on my way back. This is my first gas stop. I make uh, two stops on the way. It gives me a chance to stretch my legs and uh, get gas and you know have a drink of water and just kind of get caught up. If this is your first time, welcome to Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs. If you're passionate about motorcycles, please take a second to click that subscribe button. Don't forget the notification bell. YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. And uh, let me get my trip meter set here. I just uh, filled up, so I'm resetting the trip meter so that I get my mileage number squared away. I think we're good to go now. If you've been, if you watched my last uh, motor vlog, it was actually a little bit different. It was a uh, something I'm trying out. I'm thinking about doing a series of. Uh, motor vlogs I don't know well, let me ask your opinion what do you think about this idea where uh, I cover different you know sections of highways destination highways we get on the highway here Okay, we're on our way now. So uh, my thought was that uh, like I did this uh, moto vlog a couple days ago, or I've edited it a couple days ago, I actually did it five days ago, where I um, decided rather than take the interstate like I'm on right now, as you can see why I hate the interstate. I just don't like all the traffic. I don't like dealing with the big trucks. Um, <clears throat> I just like a more relaxed ride. And so I decided what I would do is I would do a motor vlog uh, talking about Highway 180 West, going from Weatherford all the way to Snyder, and then I cut south at Snyder down to Big Spring and then over to Midland. And you know, obviously it's a longer ride because it's not a direct route. Uh, you have to stop through some small towns, which doesn't bother me. I enjoy that. I think it's always kind of interesting to see these little towns along the way in different uh, parts of the country. And I don't know. I just found it a, a much more interesting way to go. I think I may even do it the next time I go to Midland. I'll probably be back out here again in a few months. And um, now it, it did take me longer to get to get to Midland. It took me about eight hours honestly it, because I, I made some stops. I did some videotaping. Uh, you know so I, I there was probably more time than I would normally spend but even though it took me a solid eight hours to only go 350 miles, I felt so much better, even though it was windy. Now, the wind was a pain because it was really, really high winds. We got a lot of wind today as well. Uh, not as bad as it was the other day because I was heading into the wind the other day. Today, it's a little more of a crosswind, and sometimes I get it you know, coming from behind me. So it's not quite as bad today as it was uh, on the way out here. Now, a lot of you will notice if you watched that last video, you'll remember that my GoPro camera uh, on my helmet, my helmet camera, almost fell off. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get some of the video I wanted to get because uh, for a lot of the trip, the camera was aiming down. I didn't even realize it. I just didn't pay attention because the wind and the, tr you know, the ride, I just wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. 
But when I did finally notice it, because I, I went to turn the camera on or off and I could tell it was loose. And at first I thought I had just, the screw that I had, you know, for the GoPro mount was loose. But when I pulled over, uh, I pulled off on the side of the road somewhere to tighten it up. I don't remember where, somewhere on the outside of Mineral Wells. And I could see that that adhesive, double-sided adhesive tape had let loose. And it let loose from the chin mount, not from the helmet. And so I went ahead and took it as a miracle that the GoPro didn't fall off. There was just a tiny, tiny bit still intact. And it was holding it on, keeping it from falling off. Because if that had let loose, especially with the wind, it would have just flown right off the helmet and I'd have lost a $500 GoPro. So when I got to Midland, my brother and I looked at this uh, chin mount and he noticed right off the bat he said well this thing has been 3d printed this is not it's not molded plastic it's 3d print and i'd never even paid attention to it never noticed it but sure enough upon uh, close inspection it does appear as though that these chin mounts are 3D printed, and you say, well, what difference does that make? Well, it's a very different type of plastic. It's very hard, you know, it's very, uh, it's a very solid uh, piece, but it may or may not, I don't know for sure, I can't, I'm not qualified to talk about this yet, but it may not adhere to that double-sided tape as good as molded plastic does. Now, I will tell you, I've had these uh, GoPro mounts like here on the side of my helmet, which is what I used before I got the chin mount. I've been using those for years. This has been on the helmet probably five years. I have never had a GoPro mount fail, ever. And GoPro uses the double-sided adhesive uh, from 3M. And I can't remember when I got this chin mounts, I don't remember if it had 3M tape or if it had some other brand of tape. I don't remember. If you have chin mounts and you can look at yours, tell me if, if you remember what type of adhesive it came with. I do know that I was extremely careful to thoroughly clean with alcohol the surface that I adhered it to on my helmet and I can't remember if the chin mounts came with the adhesive tape already applied or not. I don't know if I had to apply it to the chin mounts. But when I was at my brother's we took the chin mounts and we cleaned off that surface where the tape goes we even took a Dremel tool and ground it down a little bit to give it a little bit more of a rougher surface for better adhesion because it's very, very slick. It's a very slick surface. And then we took some 3M brand double-sided red. You have to use the red because the red is for outdoor use. And it is the strongest tape. I think it's the strongest double-sided adhesive that 3M makes. And that's what GoPro uses. And we took that double-sided red tape and reapplied it. Ah, before we did that, we used some 3M adhesive promoter. And it's this uh, liquid that you kind of paint on there. And it's uh, it just promotes better adhesion. And then I put the 3M tape on top of that on the chin mount. And then I also used 3M adhesive promoter after cleaning the helmet really good in that area. I used some 3M adhesive promoter on the helmet. And then I applied the chin mounts where it was before. This is in the same location. And then I used a small clamp to clamp the inside of the helmet to the chin mount and keep pressure on it. And I left it for 24 hours. So 
I feel like I've gone above and beyond what chin mounts recommends now and I'm going to test this again now as it is right now as I said in my previous video I honestly cannot recommend chin mounts at this point in time I did reach out to their tech support on Friday told them what had happened I sent them a small video just like I showed you in my last video of how the chin mount had come loose I explained the whole situation I did not hear back from them until later Friday afternoon and they said that there's no way they could get get me a new chin mount until you know until uh, until I got back and I don't even know what they plan to do they do have a six-month warranty but that doesn't help me if my GoPro if, it, if if I lose my GoPro for five hundred dollars they're not going to cover that all they're going to do is give me a new chin mount <clears throat> the chin mount itself didn't fail it's the adhesive that failed so I don't know what they plan to do I know that uh, I am within the six month warranty. I think it's six months, it's either four months or six months, but I'm, in, I'm within the warranty period because I just put this on in December. And it's been working fine. I never had any problem with this until this road trip. We will see, I'm going to try out this new adhesive that I put on here. I'm hoping this is a better solution. But I'm sorry, uh, I had recommended this chin mount in one of my previous videos because I hadn't had any trouble with it. It worked fine for a couple of months. I've been fine with it. And it took it three months before it failed. So that's why I do long-term testing of these products. Not every product, but most products because when I recommend them, and that's why you have to keep watching these videos because things change. I've recommended a lot of products on this channel. And it's possible that six months down the road or a year down the road or two months down the road, something might fail. A few months ago, I added these chrome decorative strips. They looked really cool. The guy, the, the owner of the bike loved it. I followed all the instructions. And two weeks later, the chrome strips started to pop off. And I had to come back and make a follow-up video and say, hey, don't buy these. You could have this problem. And so uh, that's why it's always important to keep following up and checking these most recent videos. So right now, I would advise caution. Now they do have, I will say this, Chin Mounts does provide a like a security tether that you can attach to your camera and then it has a little, uh, I don't know, a little string or something and you attach the, uh, but it also uses double-sided tape. So, it, you know, you're still relying on that so that if this came loose, it would not just fall off. I never could find a surface on my helmet to attach that tether to. I may end up attaching a tether to this GoPro mount that's on the side of my helmet if I can figure out a way to do it just for additional security. I'm, I'm anxious to see how this uh, system that we've come up with works and hoping, hopefully this will not fail. I was a little concerned when I first got the chin mount in and looked at it. It did not seem like there was very much surface area on that chin mount attaching to the helmet. And I was concerned with the weight of a GoPro. The GoPro is pretty heavy, especially with this media mod and everything. You know, and the batteries in the new GoPro are a little heavier. So I was a little concerned that it would handle this. Uh, but it, it worked fine. So we'll see. The jury is still out on the chin mounts, at least for the HJC helmet. Once I get back, I've got couple of new videos to make. I should have a new Cardo headset in to test for you in the next week or so. I'm looking forward to that. Another motorcycle detailing video coming soon. 
So, uh, should be a lot of cool stuff. Oh, and another Crown and Comments coming up here very shortly. Maybe next week. So, thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Don't forget to share this video with all your friends. And, um, gosh, I guess I'll just see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs.